Hello, today I will tell you what are variables, what is a type of variable, what type of variables you can create. So a variable is a container that you can use to store information data, like for example, numbers, characters, and other things like that. So variables are looking like that, right? A container that you can name and you can put something inside. And well, the truth is that it looks more like that. You have got a RAM, which is random access memory. Yes, that's why you need RAM. You want to reserve something from your random access memory, right? And when you do it, you can store there, for example, numbers, characters, or floating numbers. So numbers like that and how to do it, how to give an instruction to your computer to reserve something from the random access memory. In order to do it, you type something like that in the main method, int a, for example. So I have just reserved in the random access memory a place for numbers, for integers. Int stands for integer, right, which is a number. And now I can store there a number. How to assign there a number? How to change the value there, right? In order to do it, we type the equal sign and then we say what we want to assign there. So for example, 10. So right now we reserved in our random access memory because this is an integer, integer is saving 33 bits, which is four bytes of your memory. So yeah, it would take four more bytes. Um, your program will take four more bytes when you click play. And well, you assign there 10, right? This assigning is called initialization. When you assign a value to variable the first time. So you can later, of course, change this value. Or of course, you can also send it to the output using the, for example, system out print line. Uh, this shortcut that I've just used is when you type the C out and you click tab, as you can see, then you don't need to type all this thing again because of the NetBeans ID. So I just send 10 on the output. As you can see, it's working fine. And of course, you can change this value any time. So you can change it to, for example, 15. And as you can see, now it's 15. So that's how you change a value. Well, variables are called like that because they are able to vary, which means that they, can, they are able to change, right? Uh, and we have just changed the value of the variable like here which can store, of course, only integers, which are numbers. So um, we have to remember to be careful to not set something like that, right? Because this is called string, which is sequence of characters. You cannot store characters inside different uh, container that has got the wrong type, okay? So we need to learn about all possible types that we can use. So if we wanted to store here something like, for example, string, we need to type string. Then, as you can see, we can easily store something like that. So for example, my name, right? And of course, uh, as you have probably noticed, I can't assign to a string a number, right? You can't change the value to the different type value. So uh, when I play it, as you can see, here is my name. You can, of course, create and you, well, you should name it a bit better. So for example, name and now my surname, right? And now we can do something like name plus surname. Plus is used to connect two strings. And as you can see now, it's Arkadiusz Wodarczyk. If you want to add a space, you're just gonna do something like that, right? Arkadiusz Wodarczyk. You just added uh, some a space here, right? 
using this quote sign. So that's a string. We need to do something in comment. Let's create it. Like let's describe what we have just learned. So there are integer types like the int and it's 33 bytes. Uh, let's copy it here from here. And well, you can store there from minus two to the power of 31 to two to the power of 31 minus one. Well, we could go into this a bit deeper. You just need to know that you can store values from that range to another range, right? So when you do something like int a, you cannot assign here something like that because this say, hey, you know, this number is just too large, okay? It's too big, you cannot do it. But hey, what if I wanted to assign here something big? Because, you know, sometimes you want to do some scientific stuff. Then you're gonna use, for example, long. Long is 64 bits and you can store there numbers from minus 2 to 63 to the power of 63 to 2 to the power of 63 minus 1 and when you do something like that as you can see now it doesn't work still but it's because by default any number looking like that is integer if you want to change it to the long you need to do something like that. You need to type a DNL. Let's do it with the big letter so we can see, right? And now, when we get it to the output, as you can see, it's working. If we did it that way, it's not gonna work. If we did it, for example, that way, it's also not gonna work, okay? So we need to add this L at the end to say that you know what you are doing. You want the big number here okay and well what in the other integer types do we have we have got some short one like for example byte which is eight bits byte is really a eight bits so it's nothing su surprising um, this is the smallest amount of information you can store one bit is the smallest information you can store in your computer which is zero or one right and uh, the, the the range from is from minus 128 to 127 so you're gonna use a byte when you don't want to store big numbers like that you want to store just very small numbers and you don't want to use too much space in your memory right you're going to save your memory you can also use the short integer which is 16 bits and you can start there from 32,078 minus um, 32,768 uh, to 33,767. So you can just do something like that, right? And you can store there just a bit bigger number between this and this. Okay, so these are integer types and now character types. You can use the character type to store a character. So, for example, well, let's create a character and let's assign here a character like A. And let's get it to the output like that. And as you can see, we can see a character here. You can store here only one character. We cannot do something like that, right? If you want to do something like that, you have to use the string, which can store sequence of characters and look at the difference here here we have double quotes right here we have an apostrophe which is single quote and uh, well um, if you want to create a string you need to use that one if you want to create a character single character you have to use the apostrophe single quote right that's very important to know so of course there is a string which can store many characters, right? So the one that we have learned here, like that. There are two more types 
which are called floating numbers, which allows you to store numbers with a fraction. So like, for example, that, right? In order to do it, we should use the type that is called float or double. So float is single precision, which means you can lose precision here. And double, double is double precision, which means that it's better to use double precision. <laughs> the truth is that right now almost nobody is using the float because it might give you more headaches than good things, okay? This uh, has got 33 bits, this is 64 bits. And this one can store 1.4 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 44, 5. So the fraction is very small. You can have 45 zeros, right? After the dot. And 2, 3.4 multiplied by 10 to the power of 120 is 38. So it's a very big number and here is even bigger because you can store here 4.9 to the power of, wow, m minus 323, so it's very big and here 308. But as I said earlier, do not use float unless you want to serve very small number and you don't want to almost do any operation on it, okay? And you really, really want to save the random access memory, which we have tons of, of it, right? <laughs> right now, it's so big that we shouldn't most time care about something like that. When you, But if you do not need to do any operation, you need to store a number that is, you know, you don't, that doesn't have many things after the dot, it's then well, yeah, you can use the float, but there is a small problem when you create the float, uh, for example, number, right? And you assign here something like that. You will notice that hey, here is something wrong. You have to cast it to float. What the hell? What's going on? Um, when we do something like that, as you can see, the program is not working. So float is not working at all. When we create a double, it's working fine, right? But double, well. Any number that has got a fraction that has got that is automatically adding here something like D, D, right? Which stands for double. Okay, now it's working fine as you can see still. For float, you need to just use here an F. Why? Because, you know, some people could make this mistake to create float number not knowing that it's single precision and it can create for him problems that would be very hard to solve, okay? So that's why instead of float, it's better to use just double, okay? Unless you don't do any operation on these numbers. It's also good to know that when you are creating variables, you can create Man at once, so you can create something like int and then you can do something like c, d, e, f, g, right? Without any problem, it's a good idea to add here spaces so it looks a bit better. And of course, you can initialize one of them for so, for example, like that, and it's gonna work fine, right? Oh, of course, you cannot use the variable that is uninitialized, which means that it doesn't has, have a value, so you need to to something like that. Okay, that's all in that lesson. Thank you very much.